welcome to this tutorial in which I'm going to demonstrate a really powerful plugin for dealing with camera problems. As editors and as people who use footage, quite often the footage we end up using doesn't match. And it can take quite a lot of work to sort out what the problem is to get the two cameras to match together so that the end result looks really good. Here's a typical problem. I filmed this the other day. One camera had an operator and we got the white balance perfect. The second camera was remote. It was just running. We didn't really look at it as closely as we should have done. End result is the white balance was off by a long way. And we ended up with this very yellow response. And what we need to do is make the two match so that when we do a multicam edit or we actually merge the two together in some way, they don't distract the viewer because the viewer is going from one image to the other image and their eyes are going to see this tremendous change and you go, what the heck's going on? And they'll be more disturbed by the look than they are by what's going on. So we'd need to deal with this one way or another. Now you can go in and use all sorts of different effects inside of After Effects to sort this out. But there is a really great plugin. Now I don't often promote plugins, but there is a really great plugin by Revision called Rematch. And Rematch comes in two versions, a standard version and a pro version. The pro version is essentially to deal with stereo cameras, so dealing with 3D footage. If you're dealing with 3D footage, I would say that this is a must. You need to invest the money to get hold of that because it can make those two cameras absolutely match. And you can deal with all kinds of additional bits and pieces, problems, glares and all sorts by using this incredibly powerful plugin. But I'm actually looking at the standard version, which you can see here is $89.95. That's quite a lot of money. But when you consider that with virtually one click, apply the effect and virtually one click, you're going to solve this problem of non-matching cameras so that you can get on. You think that time is money. You can do it very quickly. You can even use a reference image. You don't have to have the image even showing inside your composition. And so for this investment, you can save yourself an awful lot of work. So if you go to the Revision website, revisionfx.com, you can go and find the tab for Rematch, and you can find out all the bits and pieces there. I would advise you to go and have a look. And notice also under Downloads, you can download a trial version. It will be watermarked, but you can download a trial version and try it for yourself. So I would advise that. It's a, a really powerful plugin that worked with Premiere Pro and After Effects. Now I've done a separate tutorial for Premiere Pro. This is just to show you how to use it in After Effects. Now, this particular image you can see, we've got this problem between the two. There is one other problem. You can see that I'm using interlaced footage. I happen to have another plugin that deals with that if ever there's a problem, and that's by Boris, Boris FX. And if I just start typing D in, and by the time I get to that, you've actually got a little plugin that says D interlaced under BCC Boris Continuum and Film Styles. And if you were to take the deinterlace effect and drop it onto your footage, you can see it actually deals with the interlacing problem and solves it in an instant. Now, you could have exported a deinterlaced version, but you can see by applying this effect, you can solve a problem like that if it's an issue for you. It might well not be an issue. I happened to move quite a lot during this particular talk that I did, and I started to see the interlacing lines over my head and my hands, so decided to apply it. If you do apply something like this deinterlaced effect, by the way, it will slow down your render because obviously it has to deinterlace everything as it goes through. But let's find this revision effect and see what we're doing with. So I'm now going to type re, and then if you do a hyphen, you'll actually get straight to your revision plugins. And the one that we're looking at is the standard, the, the rematch color. The stereo, as I say, deals with stereo footage, making sure that those two cameras, when you're dealing with 3D filming, are absolutely matched and you've got problems with glints and glares and whatever. You can solve it all there with the rematch stereo. But I just want to look at rematch color. And I'm going to show you the piece of footage that I've got a problem with. There's the piece of footage I've got a problem with. So I'm going to take rematch color and I'm just going to drop that on top of the footage, which is the bottom layer two. And then I'm going to go to rematch color. I'm just going to shut down the deinterlace there. Now, at the moment, it says get color from. It's getting color from itself, which is no use to us. So what we need to do is decide which layer it's going to get it from. It's going to get it from the top layer. And as soon as we do that, the two layers pretty much match. So if I turn them on and off between the two, you can see that they're very closely matched. And that took virtually no work at all. There are other options, however. You'll see under transfer method, we can go from mean shift. We can also go down to gain and offset. Those are the two I use the most. For me, these curtains were glowing a bit with just mean shift. So if I go to mean shift, there's a little bit of a glow from these curtains. But when I go down to gain and offset, 
I get a slightly better result. So you just need to play with the methods and find the one that works for you. There are even different color spaces which are supported. You've got RGB and the lab color space. And I showed this in the Premiere Pro one. I'll just show you here. This is what it says about color space. RGB and lab color spaces are supported. Lab is useful when the color differences are more due to hue differences than luminance differences. However, note that lab conversion formula is not very good with overrange values. And then it says you can actually do two passes. So you could do an RGB and a lab by just basically duplicating the effect. And when you duplicate the effect, just change the two different color spaces to get the end result if you're struggling. Now, the difference that we're going to have here, if I go between RGB and lab, in my experience, is that the end result is going to take some of the color out if I go for lab. Now, at the moment, if you look at the two, that the sun is shining on me here. Uh, it, was, it was bright outside, the sun was shining. And when I turn off the other one, you can see the sun is still shining here. But when I go down from RGB to lab, you'll see that it takes a bit more of the color out so that the two cameras don't match quite as well. So for me, the RGB is going to be the one that I want to go on because I want to maintain the color between the two. So it was in a sunny environment, it was orange, the sun was coming through in the morning, so that's the end result. So that's the, the color space I'm going to work from. That's working so far, but I'd like just to show you this one. It says frame to match. At the moment, it says match every frame. Now, for me, that works because this is going to be a multi-camera shoot. I'm going to switch between them. And if the sunlight was to change outside, a, a cloud was to go over the sun, I'd want both cameras to reflect that. So matching every frame between the two pieces of footage is great for my purposes. However, at times, you want to have specific images that you're going to use that you can keyframe between. And when it says frame to match, notice that you can load up to four different still images into the effect. And you can choose the still images down here. And then you can actually keyframe between those still images. So you can say to start off with so far, start with still one, and then at a certain point go to still two. And the keyframe type that it will produce will be a hold keyframe. So in other words, it won't change literally until it goes to the next one. Then there's an instant change between one or the other. Another way to do that, if you want to just choose a still image to represent everything, is to bring in a still image into your project. So here's a still image I've got. Drop it down as an additional layer. Turn the layer off because I never need to see it. Go back to my effect. And then rather than matching to another piece of footage, I can say match to that still image. And then that still image will be a single reference all the way through. So if you've not got the problem with changing light and you just want to have a reference image that works all the way through, there's the reference image. I'm just going to go back to using the actual footage. One of the advantages that this particular effect has in After Effects over Premiere Pro is if I go to the end of my reference footage, as you can see I am here, and now I've come over the other piece of footage, you'll notice that I've still got an effect. In other words, After Effects effectively says whatever the last frame of this shot above is, use that as a reference all the way through. In Premiere Pro, unfortunately, you get exactly the opposite. The effect would turn everything black. But this seems to give a positive effect all the way through. So even if you have used footage and it's not quite long enough, it will use the very last frame and continue to use that as a reference for the length of your composition, which is really powerful. So this is the effect, rematch by revision. It's worth the investment, in my opinion, simply for the amount of time that it's going to save you when you actually play with it. You don't have to muck around trying to match it, saving a preset, applying that preset to all your pieces of footage. You simply apply it once, and then with a couple of very simple choices, you end up with something that matches perfectly all the way through your composition. So have a look at Rematch. Download the free trial. It doesn't cost anything to download it. Have a play with it and see what you think. And if you like it, obviously you can buy it. And if you don't, well, you can just uninstall it as you wish. But for me, this has already paid itself back simply in the amount of time it saved me having to muck around and make sure that one image really matches the other without any problems. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching.